Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. And now, here's Jeff Crilly. Welcome back to the final segment of the Jeff Crilly Show. Uh, joining us now is John Sheaf. He is uh, one of the founding partners of Sheaf and Stone, one of the top law firms in North Texas. John, thank you for being on the show. Uh, thank you very much for having me. You know what I'm always fascinated about is how somebody gets into their their practice. And, and I was reading in your bio that uh, there was a time when uh, you were actually uh, a carpenter and hanging sheetrock. And, I mean, you, you've always had a lot of uh, hard work ethic, haven't you? I have. I think um, I, I grew up, uh, my dad was in the construction industry, which is one of the reasons I practiced construction law and was always able to have a job during the summer uh, out on a construction project. So I learned to work with my hands. And I think it created a very good um, work ethic. It gave me incentive to stay in college. And uh, talking about construction, you you have built quite a firm. And I've uh, you know I've interviewed a number of attorneys over the years. And in law school, they don't they don't teach you how to run a business or how to hire right or anything like that. For you to build as large a firm as you had uh, you have is is really remarkable. Well, thank you. Uh, I think it's you know made a lot of mistakes along the way, as you mentioned. Uh, they don't teach you how to run a business in law school. Uh, they don't teach you how to um, grow a business, and I think you just have to uh, take your time and try and make the right decisions. Um, my partners and I pray about a lot of a lot of our decisions along the way, uh, and uh, we've made our mistakes and tried to learn from them. How many attorneys do you have now? We have sixty-two as of last week. Wow! And just the history of the firm. You, um, when you started it, how many? Uh how many? We started with five attorneys and uh, four partners and one associate uh, have in one office in the Preston Center area. We opened an office up in Frisco in 2004, so 12 years ago. Uh, by that time, we had probably about 20 attorneys. Um, we moved our Preston Center office downtown in 2008, and I think we're currently uh, have the same number of attorneys in each office. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And for you to even have the foresight to uh, go into Frisco in 2004, because uh, that was a long time ago, and it's not nearly what it is today. Uh, did you did you kind of see the writing on the wall in 2004 that, that Frisco's the next boom town? I would love to claim credit for that, but no. Uh, I think it was <laughs> initially more of a convenience and realizing I didn't want to spend the next 25 years driving from Frisco all the way downtown. Um, it has since been a great opportunity for our law firm. We're very involved in Collin County uh, with, uh, with at Collin County and Denton County with respect to uh, the bar associations up there. Yes, and I've been to your office in Frisco, and, and you do have a kind of a catbird seat on some amazing construction that's going on. Talk about what is going on uh, up north. Well, People have heard about the $5 billion mile, which is an area which is just north of our office. But in, ad in addition to the five, what they called originally the $5 billion mile and is now over $6.5 billion in terms of expected construction. Uh, to the south of us, within two miles of our office, we also have Legacy West, which is a $3 billion development. Toyota, which is a, a billion-dollar development. And... Uh, there are a couple others right in that Granite Park and even Hall Office Park where we're located. Wow. A lot of construction, probably about $12 billion of development within the next, within two miles of our office up in Frisco. That's amazing. And, of course, when you have construction, when you have uh, businesses, you also have litigation. So let's talk about kind of your sweet spot as an attorney, um, the, uh, the construction law business. Well, um, generally, we represent or I, I represent uh, owners and contractors who get into disputes over either cost overruns or delays in construction. Uh, one thing people don't realize is that probably more important than cost overruns are delays in construction. If you're building an office building and you're expected to be you're expecting to put tenants in that building on January 1st, if uh, the project isn't done until June 1st, you've lost six, month of re six months of revenue. Wow. So uh, it's very important and can lead to a lot of litigation. 
And in terms of uh, the the size of uh, cases that you'll take on, do you do you specialize in kind of uh, Fortune 500 companies, or are you are you taking uh, you know small business owners that have uh, uh, needs? Usually, companies that are probably in the five million dollars a year in sales and above. And really, as a as a firm, my construction practice probably makes up maybe seven to ten percent of the entire firm's practice. Uh, one of the things we've strived to do is have a balanced, full-service um, group of attorneys. Half of our attorneys do transactional work, which means they're doing uh, mergers and acquisitions. They're doing negotiations on the ac- of acquisition of real property. Mm-hmm. We have several attorneys who do intellectual property, so we're doing patent uh, applications, patent prosecution, patent defense. Um, we have attorneys who do uh, immigration law. In fact, I think you've had one of my partners yes. on your show recently talking about that. And then on the other half of the law firm are litigators. And we do all commercial litigation, which means lawsuits between businesses, uh, maybe over a construction project, maybe over a uh, uh, oil and gas securities fraud case. Yes. So a wide range of practice areas. I know it's uh, very competitive these days uh, between law firms. Uh, how how what do you attribute your success to in terms of getting getting some of the top talent in North Texas? I think one our compensation system for lawyers is a very uh, it's a an objective system. You're not uh, ex, you're not counting on somebody who's your friend making sure you're making enough money. It's all up to you. Mm. You know we, uh, we expect all of our attorneys to be working at developing their books of business to become uh, to have a larger book of business. Uh, and to do good work. So they have to be able to do good work, be good at client relations, and people who uh, are willing to do that and who have an entrepreneurial spirit um, are attorneys that fit well within our firm. That's uh, that's outstanding. Um, so uh, I, I've uh, dined with you. We've had lunches together. You're a very good man. I know your faith is a large part of uh, of who you are. Talk a little bit about how your faith um, guides you as you make business decisions. As I mentioned earlier, um, my Bill Stone and Kelly Crawford, who are the two other founding partners, uh, we pray together a lot about big, big decisions. Uh, we don't like to. Um, have our Christian beliefs, uh, we don't put them out there um, and talk a lot about them to clients and stuff like that because I think I'd much rather people see my Christian walk in what I do and how I act and not what I say. Yes. Uh, Because too often I think some people will lead with their Christianity and um, uh, sometimes I find myself guarding my wallet. (laughs) <laughs> so I would much rather people see, you know, see see that I act that way rather than hear me say it. Well, and I think you're one of the uh, main reasons why attorneys would go with Sheaf and Stone when they meet you. I mean, you're just a very good man, John, and I think people sense that about you and know that um, you're you're making good business decisions um, and and working in their best interest. Well, thank you very much. So let's talk about the the future with with Frisco continuing to expand. Um, uh, what do you see for the future of of Sheaf and Stone? I expect us to continue to grow in the Frisco office, especially probably faster than the Dallas office. Um, we've just added some additional space, which will give us room for about forty five attorneys up in Frisco, which wow. will then make us the largest uh, law firm in Collin County. Uh, I could see in the next five to ten years us adding offices in Fort Worth and Austin. So I'd like wow. us to continue to grow. You know, uh, I, as a small business owner myself, you know, we've we've grown to now 17 employees, and with every time you grow, there's some growing pains and and adjustments. How, how do you keep the, the the ship sailing in the right direction w- with uh, a firm that's growing as quickly as yours? It's sometimes hard to do. Um, again, uh, I get back to the, the prayer issue. If, if it's a big enough decision, pray about it. And uh, generally, we'll come to a decision that uh, whether we, we, ne- we may not necessarily agree with the guidance we're getting from God, but uh, if that's where we think he's guiding us, we'll often follow uh, we've learned that when we don't listen <laughs> is when right. we make the mistakes. And you've had clients with you now for for decades, haven't you? Yes. And and you don't you don't 
retain clients year after year after year in, unless you're you're really working in their best interest? Well, you have to work in their best interests, and you have to um, listen to them. I think uh, one thing lawyers don't tend to do is to listen to their clients or ask for feedback. They're afraid to get feedback. Um, they're afraid that the client's going to tell them what they've done wrong. I think one of the things, one of the, um, I guess, the stereotypes about attorneys is that they're all about, uh, you know, racking up the bills and making as much money as possible. But I'm, I'm sure there are countless times when you've talked somebody out of litigation or talked them out of a protracted dispute uh, because you knew that in the end they would lose money by going to that lengthy court fight, even though it would cost your firm money. I think that is the case. I think 97% of the lawsuits settle at some point prior to trial. The key to wise litigation is deciding when the right time to settle is. It may be right when you start the lawsuit. It may be the day before trial. You have to look at all of the resources that you're going to put into that litigation, Mm -hmm. including just personal time and right. personal headache and personal anxiety and value that against how much more am I going to make by this lawsuit versus what it's going to cost me up through that time. So, and you have to, you know, on my business card, it says attorney and counselor. And I describe that as being two different things. The attorney is the guy who goes to battle. The counselor is the guy who sits down with you the night before the battle and talks to you about, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is what may happen. You know, if I were in your shoes, I would probably look at it this way. Wow. John, we, were, we only have about 30 seconds left. How do people get a hold of you? Uh, our website is www.solidcouncil.com, or if somebody wants to email me, it's john.sheaf at solidcouncil.com. Thank you. John, you're a very Thank good you very man. Much. We'll, we'll have you back soon. Thanks. And that's been the Jeff Curley Show. We'll see you next week.